One of the major themes of Rosh Hashanah is the idea of God as judge. When we say Avinu Malkeinu, we're evoking an image of a God on high watching us and judging us. It's kind of easy to laugh off the idea of a man in the sky weighing your good and bad deeds and deciding your fate for the next year. But when we talk about God as judge, we mean something far more complex than a person up there that can see us. It means that we believe there are consequences for our actions, not that they are all just in the past and should stay there unexamined. Without this understanding, we would never learn and be able to grow. Tshuva, the Hebrew word for repentance, also means return. This suggests something to return to. You can't return somewhere that you've never been before. So Rosh Hashanah gives us the opportunity to remember, to return to the past year, and to consider how we did. We are all projects under construction, and we will be for our entire lives. Rosh Hashanah contributes to our ability to do teshuva by reminding us that we aren't the ones that began this project. And the one who did, God, is still watching, helping, and guiding. It's easy to look back on our year and focus either only on the good or only on the bad, or at least try to raise one up over the other. In reality, it's pretty rare to be able to say that a year was all good or all bad. The same is true of ourselves. Judaism teaches that tzaddikim, people who are basically all good, are extraordinarily rare. And so are reshaim, people who are basically all bad. The vast majority of us are benonim, are in-betweeners. One of the most revered rabbis of history, Moses Maimonides, wrote that we should all strive to act as if we are evenly balanced between innocence and guilt. On top of this, we should also look at the entire world as if it, it itself is evenly balanced between innocence and guilt. That way, if you commit one wrong act, you overbalance yourself and therefore the entire world towards the side of guilt. But if you commit one good act, the exact opposite happens. You overbalance yourself and therefore the whole world towards the side of innocence. Now, this may just be a recipe for constant anxiety, but there's something to it. It means that our tradition teaches that everything you do matters, but no one is expected to be all good all the time. Each new choice we make is a new opportunity to fully redeem ourselves and the entire world. It makes space for humans to be human and therefore to make mistakes, and sometimes even make an active choice based on a bad impulse, and still be redeemable through trying again. But the question that this leaves me with is how can we tell good from bad? And how do we redeem ourselves if we made a bad choice? If we accept that we're all benonim, that we're all in-betweeners, we have to look at how we become in between. What is it about the vast majority of us humans that makes us this way? Why is it so hard sometimes to make the right choice? And how do we return, how do we do teshuva to those times when we've made those wrong choices? Rabbi Schnur Zalman of Liadi taught that we have two natures, physical and spiritual, and each has its own voice. The physical speaks as a self-serving passion, the spiritual as an awakened intellect. The spiritual embraces the physical. Even the inclination towards selfishness can be redeemed when it desires what it perceives as good and is filled, and this is the important part, with infinite love. When we do teshuva, we can use these two kinds of judgment, the physical and spiritual, to figure out how we can do better. Sometimes when we look back, we find we could have been more selfless, 
could have responded to a situation by deciding our own desires aren't the most important thing. Sometimes when we look back, we find that we may have needed to care more for ourselves and maybe a little bit less for those around us. Sometimes we need to be put first. Only by taking the time to look back can we see what the most loving path would be. Sometimes it's the most selfless way, and sometimes it's the way in which you take greatest care of yourself without concern for how others around you might be judging you. The clarity is found in love, and knowing what love feels like and following that feeling both towards others and towards yourself. This Rosh Hashanah, take a moment to let the past year come back to you. Which moments felt most full of love for you? Which least? As you consider yourself a Benoni and in betweener, know that your every act can be understood to be critical in your own redemption and in the redemption of the world. But each time, each moment you make a choice, you have a new chance to act with love. Each time you make that new choice, you're still a Benoni, no matter what happened the previous time. It is always a chance to live by the path of infinite love, and in doing so, redeem yourself and the world. God may not be a man in the sky with a wig and a gavel, but judgment is real on Rosh Hashanah, even if it is only your own. May your path to judgment be a good one, filled with recognizing the love of the past year and hoping for more in the coming year. May that love fill you with joy and gladness as you head into the week leading up to Yom Kippur when we repent for the times that we weren't guided by love. May infinite divine love comfort you through those moments of recognizing where you failed to love yourself or others enough. Shana Tovah.